Hey, my name's Dan, and this is how I use my Onefinity Infusion 360 to do two-sided carbs. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Fusion. I have this thing modeled up, I guess, uh, maybe like a ring tray or a key catcher or something like that. Um, as you can see, it is a completely rounded, almost organic kind of shape where there's no real traditional way anyway to you know fixture it to your CNC machine so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I machine this out um, first the first thing you have to do is create your stock body so this is the size of a piece of wood that I know that I have uh, that I can machine it out of and I moved my body into the center of that piece so I know that it's going to be cut out right. Uh, the next thing you have to do is make two bodies that represent where your pins or dowels will go. These two bore holes have to be situated symmetric to where you're going to flip it. So you can do two or four but when you flip it they need to be in the same spot if that makes sense. Okay so after that you have to have some way to fixture this in your machine. So what I did for this piece, what worked for me, is to model in these tabs so that the machine won't machine out the whole perimeter. That way it won't fall out of the piece while I'm machining it. And you'll see that in the simulation. Um, the other thing you have to do is you have to draw a outline of your piece. Now this is just a spline I made um, that I mirrored in both ways. You can see that it's not exactly perfect. It doesn't have to be. It just has to follow your outline as close as you want it to. Uh, and the purpose of that is to set your machining boundary so that it doesn't just eliminate all of your waste. All of your stock, excuse me. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the modeling setup that you have to do. From there, you're going to want to go into your manufacturing, obviously. So you're going to need two setups. First of all, you're going to need a setup from the top and then a setup from the bottom. The top setup I usually do from the center. I know I've done it in the past from the bottom left with totally successfully. Uh, so it's, it is possible, but for simplicity, I, I usually just do it straight from the middle. Um, first operation I have here is the dowel bore. So I usually use, it's a quarter inch dowel. You could use a quarter inch bit, but the dowels I get are never exactly a quarter inch. So I use an eighth inch and I bore it. Um, that's just how I do it. I'm sure you can figure out however you want to do that, but you need to bore these dowel pins. One time you will need to bore it in your stock. So you have registration in your stock. You'll have to run it again, zeroing it to your waste board so that you have something to put the pins in. The next setup here is, or the next operation is my adaptive and then a scallop for the finishing in this. So. I will show you how I set up my adaptive. Quarter inch bit. I'm using a bits and bits upcut spiral. It's just what I have, it doesn't matter. Um, what matters here is you set your machining boundary to that spline or that outline that you made. I put a quarter inch offset because that's the diameter of my bit, which will allow it to completely go all the way to the outside of the part without going too far and cutting out all of your stock. Um, other than that, I usually leave a little stock in my roughing passes. Um, the rest of this stuff is kind of up to you. If you have questions about it, let me know. I'm no expert. I know a little bit. After you have your adaptive, I just ran a scallop on this one. You can always do a parallel, but you can see it's not going to cut these out because we have that set 
as our machining boundary with this spline here. Same with the scallop. It goes up and around our tabs. So after that, you have your second setup. So your first setup, Z, Z is facing up. Your second setup, exactly the opposite. So I'll machine this side, then I'll flip it like this. And then I'll machine this side. You can see I have X going this way, Y going this way, Z going up. Same for this one. X going this way, Y going this way, Z going up. <clears throat> Once you have these uh, set up up here, you really just need to duplicate them in a separate setup. They're the same exact uh, parameters, so it's easy for the second one. Same thing, adaptive and a scallop. So I will go ahead and simulate these so you can see what it all looks like when it's cut out. And maybe I'll fast forward through this part. So now you can see what it will look like once I'm done here. You'll have your part cut out. It'll be held in by the tabs. You'll still have plenty of meat over here to hold it in when you flip it. Uh, so let's head over to the machine and actually make this thing. All right. Here we are over to the machine. I've got my stock here. I've marked the center point on it. Um, I think what I'll do first is do a bore with this eighth inch bit right on the spoil board. And you see I have some other ones from other projects there. Um, so let's do that. So what I'll do is I will go on here. I'm already been honed. I'm going to probe Z. Okay. Okay. Then we can go ahead and run our pass for the spoil board bore. I'm gonna get the hearing protection on. done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jog up out of the way. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to move back to my origin. Okay. And I'm going to stick my stock on there and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my stock lined up here. I've got it clamped into the uh, spoil board. And so now all I have to do is re-zero off of that. And I'll be good to go to run the same bore path as I did before. Okay. Good. Let's run that bore path. These are the dowels that I use. These are just um, doweling jig dowels. You get them at the Home Depot. They're pre-cut, um, about an inch long. They're fluted, so you can kind of jam them in, but you can see they fit perfectly in there. Uh, so next we'll run our adaptive pass and then our spiral pass, and I'll flip it after that. So let's do it. This is the bit I'll be using, an upcut spiral bit, bits and bits, quarter inch bit. Bits, bits and bits and bits, it's a bits, it's a quarter inch bit from bits and bits. The bit I'm using will be the quarter inch bit from bits and bits. Okay, then we can go back to our origin. 
And we can reprobe again. Okay. And we're good to go for our adaptive clear path. Uh, I'm going to put on dust collection for this operation. <laughs> Okay, I forgot to hit record when I did the second probing part, but basically I put in the round uh, quarter inch ball nose bit and then I went ahead and I used my controller here to jog over to a part of the stock that remains and I just did uh, probed off of that and then I went back to my origin point and I started the next tool path and now I'm going to flip it over. Okay, so now all we have to do is find a couple of pegs, a couple of these dowels that fit in the hole, stick them in there, flip it over this way, so this is how we had it set up, put it in there, and run the next uh, adaptive clearing pass. Alright, we'll see you when that's done. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll Z-probe off of this again. So. After that, we'll see you again. And then after that, you're pretty much done. You can see it looks just like the simulation did. Little sanding cleanup, little finish. Anyway, so like I said, um, I'm outside here in Anchorage. Uh, no expert. This is just how I do it. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, and good luck. See you soon.